Blessed is our God who is now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Oh, hear my prayer, give you to my supplication, and your truth, hear me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul, has crushed my life to the ground, he has made me to dwell in darkness like those who are long and dead, and my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the day before the meditation and all your works that find on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you, my soul. Longs for you like a thirsty man. Hear me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not turn your face away from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Cause me to hear your mercy in the morning, for in you I have put my trust. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way in which I should walk far and up my soul to you. Rescue me, Lord, from my enemies to you have I cut the refuge. Teach me to be your will, for you are my God. Your good spirit shall lead me on the land. In the land of uprightness, for your name is saved, O Lord, you shall bring me in your righteousness. You shall bring my soul out of trouble. And in your mercy shall I live destroy my enemy, and you shall destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is you, comes in the name of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord who called by his holy name. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All the nations surround you in the name of the Lord, I have come down. Pero os que vengan en mi, no hay manos, so I fall, and I was, I don't know what to give you. This has been done by the Lord, this wonderful arise. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. To the Theotokos, let us run now, most fervently, as sinners and lowly ones, let us fall down in repentance, crying from the depths of our soul. Lady, come and help us, have compassion upon us. Hasten now, for we are lost in the host of our errors. Do not turn your servants away, for you alone are a hope to us.
Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God and the Savior, you give it birth. I ask you, O Virgin, from the danger to deliver me. For now I run to you for refuge, both my soul and my reasoning. Now I forever enter the angels of angels, so many diseases, the body, and the soul, and the unity. For you have given birth to 
that he himself has surrendered, for which reason, O Virgin, please intercede with him who is your Lord and Son, from the enemy's evil, deliver me. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord, 
And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. Behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for he was mighty has done great things for me, and will be as his name. And Mary remained with her about three months, and returned to her.
stay on daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but in the rest of us. That is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now and forever into the ages of ages. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are empty of our defense. As soon as we offer this occasion to you, O Master, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, for have mercy on us. It's always interesting for me to kind of reflect when there is a saint of the church that finds its commemoration so close to a feast day, a major feast day like Christmas that has a fixed day. 
you know, it's not it's not like Costco that is movable, so we have dates all over the place, depending on when those saints are. And of course, the, the closest saint to Pascha that we celebrate is St. George right afterwards, um, because he will not be celebrated during uh, a great fast. He has to be celebrated because of how big of a saint he is outside of, um, of, of a fasting period. But the day before Christmas, which is now where we are, we're on Christmas Eve already, uh, uh, according to the church, the day before Christmas, we commemorate the memory of our righteous mother, Evgenia. She was a virgin martyr, a non martyr. And it's a really interesting life because she lived at the tail end of the second century. You know, that's that's kind of where she was in that in those in those years. Anytime you have a one at the beginning of your name, and I'm not talking about 1,000, I'm talking about a three-digit number with a one, you know you're close to Christ, at least uh, uh, chronologically. Uh, but anytime you have a one, two, or a three, or a, or a two-digit number, you're going to be a martyr. Almost. If you're a saint of the church during that time, you're going to be a martyr. And so it's interesting that she is a non-martyr, a are fan of martyrs, martyr, you know, that she's a virgin martyr. It, it, was, it was not a, a big deal uh, necessarily, except that there weren't a whole lot of Christian virgins that were very popular during that time, because the, the virgins in the, in the pagan temples were, you know, waiting to, you know, dedicate themselves in, in one way or another to you know, whatever, to whatever God they were going to be uh, dedicated to in some crazy, you know, sexual way. But the chastity that God asks of the faithful was a whole different level of chastity, especially if you were going to be a virgin in that regard. You were a virgin for your whole life uh, if you were dedicated that way. Which is, of course, why we don't have a problem with virginity of the Lord of God, even though she gave it. So, um, but Evgenia was, was the daughter of a prefect in the, in the area of Rome. And when, when she found out about Christianity, when she understood uh, what was going on, she, you know, she took some people with her. She had a few, like, two, uh, kind of like delegates with her, uh, that, that, and they all went into a monastery. But there were no female monasteries. There were only male monasteries. There was only uh, cloisters of men that were gathering together. And so she had to disguise herself as a male. And when she was in that lifestyle, she took the name Evgeny. Instead of Evgenia, she took the name again, and she just went by Eugene, essentially. When, you know, close name, that's fine. But she she disguised herself and lived this lifestyle. And very, very much along the way, because, you know, the devil's never going to let us go, there was uh, a woman who, seeing, and I'm going to forget her name, Melanthea, that's what that was her name. Melanthea, who, seeing the virtue of Eugene, the monk, became attracted to that virtue. Didn't understand what she was truly attracted to, thought it was a misguided, lustful thing, and she sought after this monk in a very lustful way. Well, this, I mean, would have worked. But it didn't stop her. And when she was rejected, she reported Evgenia, the monk Eugene, to the authorities, saying, uh-uh, you don't get to be chased, especially not for Christ, you're a Christian. So now she reported 
uh, Evania to the authorities. Well, she was brought forth before her father, who was the person that was going to judge her. And at that point, it came out, it, you know, that the, 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 the they had been searching for her for a while. She secretly left. She wanted to be a Christian. And so in that discourse, the, 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 the father, uh, Philip, realized that this is why she left. This is what was going on. Oh my goodness. So he became a Christian and was eventually beheaded. Because he recognized what she was doing for Christ. And then she was taken before uh, uh, one of the higher ups. And then she, and with her two, uh, with her two delegates that were with her in this monastery, they were all killed. For Christ. But it wasn't just that they were martyred for Christ, although that is very significant. That could have been the whole story. It was that their entire life was devoted to Christ. It's the complete contrast. We see Christ coming to fallen humanity in the story of the Nativity. Christ coming to a humanity to a humanity that was acting like animals, which is why he's in a cave with dumb animals. Because this is where he was coming. It's significant that that we were acting like dumb animals during the time of Christ came. And he was in a cave of dumb animals and animals. Why? Because there was no room for Christ. At the end, according to the Gospel of Luke. That's why he had to be in the cave. That's why he had to be set in a food truck. That's why he had to have the animals slobbered. That's what, you know, nobody would sleep there. You wouldn't be caught dead there. None of us would. And this was where our Savior was. It's the complete contrast. A, a life being put into that place where no human being should ever sleep. Why? Because at the end, there was no room for the Savior of our life, for the Creator of the world. And then on the flip side, today we celebrate St. Evania, who couldn't get enough of Him. Who, in that way, it wasn't enough just to become a Christian. She had to devote every breath to his name. There was no time that could be devoted in her life. Justifiably, she could not justify any portion of her life that was devoted to anything but our Savior. There was a vast ocean of room for Christ. There was a mansion for our Lord in her soul. He had every bit of her life and her soul. It's the complete contrast. And when we look at those two lives back to back the way we do, we look at Evgenia, who had nothing but room for Christ, and then we go to the very next day where no one had room for Christ. We are ashamed. Christ came to a place with no room so that he could give us what? Room there. He came to, to uh, down to earth so he could bring us into the heavens. We have to look at the life of St. Antonia and so many of the other martyrs and see that contrast. See how to make more room for our Lord in our lives. It doesn't have to be, at least initially, we don't have to just strike everything away right now, but we have to take steps towards that. Eventually, God is going to require all of it anyway. So 
we might as well learn to give it up. Whatever it is. Like Saint Ephemia chose to do. She had it all. The daughter of a, of a, of a wealthy prefect, what, what could she possibly have wanted in her life? Nothing. So today we celebrate Santa Maria, and we will ask that uh, through her intercessions, we might make room for our Lord in our souls and in our lives. So I would ask you to come now and reverence the uh, icon, and as we have been doing, we'll, we'll bless you as well. <coughs> Oh uh -huh.